What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 17 here in the SFL and we are just a mere two weeks away from the playoffs. Thunderbirds are 10 and 5, currently the number two seed in the AFC after suffering that heartbreaking loss to the San Diego Aviators 42 to 41. What a game. I went for two at the end to try to, you know, put the good old nail in the coffin. And obviously that was unsuccessful, but I do not regret that decision at all. Now, today we are taking on the Brooklyn Nighthawks in a revenge game against subscriber quarterback Derek Deragosa. That is right. He beat us earlier in the season and he is looking to complete the sweep today. Nighthawks season is done. They're four and eleven. But playing us, you know, trying to get the sweep on a division foe, definitely still something to play for. And just a couple of house cleaning items here. Any subscriber player that was injured, which I was not even checking injuries prior to a couple weeks ago, there was quite a few. Any subscriber player who was injured, I went in and remade you on the team. So now that's going to obviously alter the season stats, but at least you will get to see your subscriber have some stats week to week. In hindsight, I should have turned injuries off, and I know that. But, you know, this is a learning curve. First time doing a series like this. And I can tell you that uh, the SFL Madden 25 iteration, I will definitely turn injuries off. But, you know, so season stats will be a little skewed. But at least you'll get to see uh, your player stats at the end of every episode. And let's be honest, injuries suck, but they are a part of the NFL. But we will clean that up come Madden 25. We got a new punter in town. Goodbye, AJ Cole. Whoever picks him up, you got yourself a good one. But I had to do my man Jack Mavro's a solid here subscriber punter on this channel. He was previously on, who, what team was he on? The Honolulu Dragons. They cut him, apparently. He was sitting in free agency. That's another thing that I have no control over. You know, I'm not managing all 32 teams here. So for whatever reason, sometimes, you know, CPU teams cut players. But he was sitting in free agency. I did not even realize it. So I figured, hey, let's get you on the T-Birds here, Jack. And that way you will be able to see your player every single episode because you know I play with the Thunderbirds every single episode. And also a uh, new subscriber here, Silas Vaden, edited the speed a little bit per your request to uh, make you a little bit faster. That gets you up to an 80 overall, brother. So you should be causing some havoc on that defensive line, I would pres pr uh, presume. And then also subscriber Jay Mongstro, our other defensive tackle. He had such a big game last week, even though we lost. He was in the backfield making big play after big play. So shout out to Jay Monstro. You did your thing. Looking for you to do your thing today as well. And can't forget about uh, running back Tubby McDouble. Big part of this team. He's always having great games. 100 plus yard games. The uh, subscriber running back out of Oregon State. And then, of course, the last subscriber on our team here, Mike Oxmall. A uh, very good slot wide receiver. He's making some big plays. Uh, he was also hurt earlier in the episode too, but back healthy. And all these subscribers going to need you to help the Thunderbirds propel ourselves to a victory today to get back to that number one seed. And the Brooklyn Nighthawks, only four wins on the season, but guess what? One of them was against us trying to avoid having two losses to uh, this man right here, subscriber Derek Deragosa out of Indiana. Getting a look and seeing what Derek has done so far this season. 2,777 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 11 picks, but didn't join right away. You know, I think he joined maybe week four, week five, something like that, maybe even a little bit later. I can't remember. So having a pretty good season, all things considered. And then at the half halfback position, no Brian Robinson, he's hurt. So it's going to be Leonard Fournette in the backfield, CJ Ham, good fullback for what that's worth. And uh, that's right. They have a really good receiving core too. Jamar Chase, Adam Thielen, no Michael Thomas, he's injured, but Isaiah Hodgins, so gotta watch out for them. Tight end, Jonu Smith and Colby Parkinson. And then the offensive line, great left tackle, one of the best, matter of fact. Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa, Landon Dickerson, left guard, so that left side is locked up for sure. Olu Oluwatimi is the center, a little bit of a drop off there, but right back to greatness with Trey Smith as the right guard. And Lane Johnson, right tackle. I don't know how this team's 4-11, by the way. They got a good roster from what I'm seeing so far. Calais Campbell, solid veteran. James Houston at the right-end position. David Anyamata and Justin Jones making up the D-tackles. 
Maybe it's the defense. I don't know. There's a little bit of drop off with defense here. Josh Uche at the left outside linebacker. Uh, they got a lot of middle linebackers, but I think it's because most of them are injured. So Anthony Walker, the Cleveland Brown himself, going to be there in the middle. Yeah, it's got to be defense, I'm thinking. Baron Browning's hurt, so Nick Herbig. And then the corner position, they got Devin Witherspoon. And then some drop off there to Jeff Okuda and Levi Wallace. Ife Melifonwu, free safety, and Brian Branch. Good, strong safety, but young and unproven. So their offense is great, I would say. Defense, not so much. So maybe it's the defense letting them down. I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't care because all I care about today is getting this W. We play the Melbourne Dreadnoughts subscriber on that team too, Alexander Klobleck, next week. So got to uh, fend off these subscribers here and get back to the number one seed. So if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. Please help me get there. It's everything to me. I love making content for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy watching it. So without further ado, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field in Toronto and get ready for the game. All right, we are primed and ready to go here, guys. Brooklyn Nighthawks gonna get the ball first, kneel down in the end zone, and that is gonna bring out the man of the hour himself, subscriber quarterback Derek Deragosa out of Indiana. We showed his stats pregame, again, for not playing a full season, for joining, you know, after I would say the first four weeks or so. I would say pretty good season, and I do remember in that first game, he absolutely dominated, made the thumbnail. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he'll make the thumbnail again. And he's going to start out single back with Leonard Fournette. It's a play fake and wide open. There is the tight end Parkinson. Nice pickup of nine. Way for Daragosa and the boys to start. I do like their jerseys, too. It's got a, a college vibe to it. I can't think of the team off the top of my head, but definitely something there. Ringing a bell here. Daragosa back in single back. Got a little bunch to his left. This time it will be Fournette. And he is met there by Bobby Wagner. However, was able to push the pile forward and pick up a first down. So uh, the Nighthawks avoiding the three and out on their opening drive. Nice way to move the chains for them. And I think it's time to dial up a little bit of pressure here. See if Yaya Diaby or someone can get in the backfield. It's a good play fake by Daragosa. There's the other tight end, Janu Smith. Picking up five, getting a look and seeing what he did last week. Seven receptions, 56 yards, serviceable, I would say. Daragosa empty now. Let's go ahead and press up with the corners. Would love to see Miles Garrett. Oh, it's a design QB run. Come on, somebody, somebody get to Daragosa. Okay, well, coming out empty in the gun. That's about the last thing I would expect. So nice play there by Derek. And the Nighthawks are moving pretty efficiently on this drive. I guess so. Uh, may have to... Think about having a spy out there. I didn't think I was going to necessarily have to do that. But when duty calls, duty calls. So Daragosa back in single back now from the 45. Another play fake and there's a sack. Nice sack there by none other than Miles Garrett. Controversial reigning defensive player of the year. Haven't called his name as much as I would like to. And he freaking pile-drived, tombstone, power-bombed Daragosa into the turf. Messing up that nicely manicured turf here in Thunderbirds Field. All right, more pressure, guys. I like that. We'll see if LaMarcus Joyner or somebody can perhaps get in the backfield. It's another play fake to Fournette. And just a throwaway that time by Daragosa. And that's a big injury there, losing the guard, Landon Dickerson. He's one of the best in the business and also one of the best on their team as well. So uh, don't hope he can come back for my sake, but for the Nighthawks' sake, definitely hope that he can come back for sure. And now it's time to play good zone coverage here. See if we can get these Nighthawks off of the field. Where's Daragosa going to go? We know he can scramble. It's going to be sack number two. Marcus Peters and one of his best buds put the pressure on Daragosa. He tried to scramble, and it uh, looks like he kind of stopped there and was surveying downfield. Nothing got open. And that is a good opening drive for this Thunderbirds defense that has been suspect as of late. Very, very suspect. Allowing 40-plus points per game. Got to clean that up. And a good start here in this one. We'll start our opening drive here. Single back. Going to test the outside with Tubby. Has some good blocks there. Uh, Trent Williams goes down. So that's, that's our best offensive lineman. 
So the offensive lineman kind of uh, <laughs> and maybe needs some more reps. You know, they're looking a little stiff out there. But, yeah, hopefully he can come back. We definitely need him. And uh, as I was saying, Tubby more of a power back, not, you know, so much getting open on the outside. So shotgun here, second and eight. And we're coming out with some meshes. There's our tight end, Logan Thomas. Nice catch. Still waiting for Darren Waller to come back. It would be great to have him. And we're going to be waiting for Trent Williams to come back, too. So that is fan-freaking-tastic. Here on second and six, let's go ahead and streak Valdez Scantling. Um, I kind of like it, actually. Jordan Love dropped it in the bucket. That was a quick step drop. MVS has been playing good for us. He has been one of our most reliable options, you know, especially getting a lot of reps there when uh, Zay Jones was injured. And he's been reliable, not the MVS that we've seen drop passes in Kansas City. That much is for sure. Tubby again. Need a good pull from our guard. We got it. Eh, I can live with a gain of six. Tubby also with a great game last week as well. Second and four, and this first quarter is ticking away. We're going to go make double on the draw. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. That juke move is just, it's a little bit on the slow side. But uh, that's all right. Tubby does some great things for us, so... Can't be too mad at him. And here on third and two, we're going to go play action rollout. Need uh, Logan Thomas to, to block for me. That would be ideal. Let's see if we can pick this up. See who wants to get open. Love, he's got plenty of room to scramble. We're just going to go ahead and do that. Jordan Love has been throwing picks these last couple episodes. I believe two, maybe even three in one of them. I don't know. But my man has been uh, catching the interception bug for sure. So, hey, I saw an opening. Nobody was out there and figured might as well just scramble for it. Might have uh, Mike Oxmo on the RPO, which is exactly what we do. Pretty good block there from Chris Olave. Picking up a nice gain of nine. A lot of RPOs in this uh, Buffalo Bills playbook that we've been using, and I kind of like it. You know, it uh, seems to work well for us. Tubby, open space, trying to follow the guard. He does get barely what he needs for a first down. So Tubby not really running great to start this one, but picks up a nice first down there. Sometimes that's all you can ask for. Um, first and 10, we'll put Olave on a curl. Might also have one of our tight ends getting open here, which I think we do. It's Thomas, second catch of the game, and that's a big one. Jordan Love starting out five for five for 50 yards, and so far, zero picks. On second and goal here, maybe... Part of me wants to audible this. I am going to audible it. We're going to trust Tubby again up the gut. Can he get it? He's got space. Oh, stonewalled there at the very last second by the defender. That was a good one. I thought Tubby had that. But surely on third and goal, we can uh, Y stick our way to a touchdown here with Chris Olave. Love calling this play on the one yard line. Chris should have it. He does. Thunderbirds strike first blood. So our defense played good. Their first drive. Our offense played good. Their first drive. So far, doing a, doing a good job. That's about all you can ask for. And surely Jay Tuck will drill this extra point, which he does. See if our defense can repeat that performance they had on the last drive. And again, we can see this route. But this time, I'm just going to see if Garrett can get back there. We're flushing out Derek Gosa again. Nearly picked by Patrick Peterson. Pass does fall incomplete, doing some jar in there with Jamar Chase, and that will bring up third down. All right, boys, good zone coverage. Again, we can see the route on the Bruh. field. Oh, wide open. That's Chase. A uh, dagger pass there by Darago. So they needed that too, man. Wow. Pay definitely needed that. That's going to kind of, you know, quiet the crowd down a little bit because uh, I'm sure if that one would have fell incomplete or something, this crowd would have been going nuts. And Derek is again with the play fake. Give me a pick. Give me some cookies. Old ass Adam Thielen. Grandpappy Adam coming down with the catch. Now Derek is starting to get it going. That will do it for the first quarter. 7-0 Thunderbirds. But the Nighthawks are now starting to put it together on this drive. And also actually outpassing us now by three yards. Because of those last two catches by Jamar Chase and Adam Thielen. So got to lock in here, guys. Got to do... All those good things that we did on the opening drive. And Daragosa again going single back. He is very reluctant to hand the ball off. But that's going to be Jonu Smith, who just 
freaking, I don't even know, 1080. 1080 snowboarded it into the end zone. Wow. Okay. So nice way to bounce back by Daragosa and these Nighthawks. I kind of feel like that is a common theme with our defense. I may be crazy. That's uh, definitely debatable. But I feel like we a lot of times play great uh, defensively on the first drive. And then the opposing team just comes back and starts carving us up on the following drive. There's a good juke by Tubby. Picking up eight yards. And he's now at seven for 27. Probably going to rely on him and or the RPO game a lot on this drive here. It's imperative that we score because it's looking like the Nighthawks have figured things out and their coach had a little talking to with them on the sideline. So we'll see if Oxmall gets open. He's not, but we're going to test the edge and just no blocking there on the outside for Tubby. And he'll actually lose a yard on that one. See if the blocking's any better for Kareem Hunt here. We're going to go screen again. Third and three. Really, really want to pick this up. Come on, give me a block. There we go. Just going to go out of bounds with Kareem. No sense in risking a fumble. Jordan Love remains perfect. And that was a nice way to move the chains there. I think we're going to come out mesh in the gun here. And... Actually, Olave is the first read, but I don't necessarily like that. Who wants to get open? Someone's open there. Is that Zay Jones? It sure is. What a heck of a season he's had for us. Picking up seven and a big third and three coming up now. Come on, T-Birds. I believe in you. And Olave up the seam. We don't need a big play. But that might be my first read. And, I mean, it's open. It's there. They're going to give it to me. I'm going to take it. I mean, come on. A freaking middle schooler could have read that. And now... Chris Olave gets injured for his troubles. Awesome. Hopefully he can come back because uh, I need all hands on deck. We've had to deal with injuries enough as it is this season. Lots of injuries. And yeah, I will definitely, definitely be turning those off in the Madden 25 iteration of the SFL. Now my main franchise that I do when Madden 25 comes out, Chris Olave not going to come back. So there you go. But uh, my main franchise, I, I will leave the injuries on. But since this SFL is more geared towards you guys, the subscribers, the last thing I want to do is, you know, add somebody and come on, man. Can I get a block for Tubby, please? The last thing I want to do is add you to the league and you get injured for 12 weeks and never get to see your character play. And here on third and four, we got some slants. Let's see what those linebackers do. I don't like anything that's going on here. Wounded duck up in the air. We're going to actually have to settle for a field goal on this one for Justin Tucker. So not ideal at all. Um, you know, points are points. Yes, I will certainly take it. But obviously looking for six. We do go up on the scoreboard. But can our defense stop Daragosa and this offense that seems to have figured it out? All right, got to be careful now. Daragosa is starting to find the hot hand. And will he give it to Leonard Floyd? He will not. He's going to be sacked by Yaya Diaby. There we go. That's that defense we saw. Does Leonard Fournette even have a single carry in this game? I'm actually legitimately curious. I want to say he doesn't. It's been all Daragosa and the boys. And uh, he's coming out tight shotgun formation now. So going to use her up on Joiner. And watch this running back. Ooh, nice adjustment there by Jamar Chase. It was only for a gain of about three, but... Heck of a way to hold on to that. Zone coverage out of the dime. That is going to be the move here. And uh, let's just make sure we lock up all the coverages here. Don't leave anything for Daragosa. Miles Garrett, second sack. Enter Miles Garrett. He's giving Daragosa all kind of fits back there. And they are going to have to punt the ball here away with Ryan Wright, the two year pro out of Tulane. That's the kind of defense I like to see from the boys. And remember, we do get... That was a weird animation. Okay, I don't know if you guys saw that. EA is not animation-based, though. Remember that. But we get the ball back after halftime as well. So a chance to really open this thing up on the scoreboard. Already into Nighthawks territory. We're going to come out uh, single back here. Or, I'm sorry, weak formation. But we got Logan Thomas. Come on, please catch that. Lo oh, Logan catches it. And he's still going. He's not the fastest chap out there, though. Can't be mad at Logan. That was a great catch, great adjustment. Aggressive caught that with the good old triangle button. But if that's Darren Waller, it's a touchdown. But can't be met. Can't be met at all. We had heavy pressure bearing down on us as well. Uh, James Houston and company were there. But look at that adjustment. He's able to catch it and spin away from Devin Witherspoon for a great gain. 
And that puts us in prime position to simply hand the ball off to Tubby here and hopefully be putting up an extra seven on the board. Let's see if Tubby can get the job done. He will cue the McDoubles. They're raining down in front of you guys as we speak. Great answer by the Thunderbirds defense and offense. See if the Nighthawks can move the ball on this drive. Miles Garrett has his X Factor on. Maybe it's time to give it to Leonard Floor, uh, Fournette. No, <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Yeah, I would say. I mean, uh, okay. Leonard Fournette pushing Antoine Winfield to the side there. Could have been a stop for no game, but he's able to turn it into four. But yeah, I mean, you know, Nighthawks, you can't become one dimensional. That much is for sure. If you want to be, I'm cool with it. Let's go ahead and audible into a zone here. Derek goes to change the play. He'll probably change it back. Maybe. Nope. He's not gonna. Uh oh. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh Jamar Chase zone beater. Ah, he's gonna score. Wow. Okay. So nice response by Derek and the Nighthawks. Jamar Chase uh, getting really close to that security guard there, brother. How did that even happen? What happened there? I know he changed the play. I changed it as well to zone. And our guys just weren't in good position. And Jamar Chase found the soft spot in the coverage. Beat us for a huge play. We got to respond here. Because, uh, yeah, the Nighthawks looks like they can do some damage. Nice RPO to Valdez Scantling. He's got open space to run. So far, Jordan Love's good day does continue. But ideally, we go down here and score with no time or little time on the clock. We get the ball back, so we'll go into halftime, reevaluate, come out, and hopefully complete the double dip scenario. Kareem Hunt, he's the agile one. First run of the game for Kareem is good for nine. And he gets the ball all the way down to the 50. Let's go Tubby inside zone out of the shotgun here. See a little hole there. And Joe Tooney leading the way, setting some good blocks. That's a nice run by Tubby. Maybe the move is inside zone. I haven't ran too many inside zones with him so far in this game. And maybe that's just the move. I don't know. But it seemed to work pretty well on that one. Now, two-minute warning is about to happen here. I want to get this playoff, though, because... Feel like we could have uh, Valdez Scantling on the corner route, which it looks like we are. MVS catches it, turning up field. Maybe he actually got down there a little bit quicker than I would have liked. But regardless, we get it to the five. Prime scoring position. McDouble screen seems like a good idea, so we're going to run it. Instant pressure. Yeah, it was instant pressure, though. Lucky that wasn't picked. Wow. And that's about the last thing that I wanted to happen. Because it also stops the clock as well. And now it basically forces us to pass it. Now, uh, I am looking definitely left side of the field. Um, Someone's getting open there. Who is that? It's about a scantling. Maybe P.I.? Potentially, I'm not sure. It kind of looked like P.I. there from Brian Branch. But yeah, um, that drive definitely fizzled out. It's not what I wanted to happen at all. And we're actually going to have to settle for three. So that could have been a lot better. And there's still a minute. Can we prevent the uh, big play touchdown from Derek Daragosa and his receivers? That's the question. No more big plays, guys. That's all I ask. No more big plays. We're going dime blitz here. And hopefully, maybe we can get some more sacks with, uh, with Garrett. That would be amazing. Ooh, nice curl route there from Jamar Chase. He's starting to come alive. I'm sure the Nighthawks will go hurry up. And nope. They'll actually call timeout. Yeah, this Nighthawks team, they're they are not to be taken lightly. I know they're 4-11, and 11, but they, it's screen, it's screen, it's screen. Come on, Floyd, get out there. Ooh, shaking the tackle there uh, is Raheem Blackshear, the backup running back. But they played us well last time. Um, I want to say, was that one a shootout? I know they won. 100% know they won. And I know that Daragosta did play well. But they just seem to play us good so far, both meetings that we've seen them. And there's Jonu Smith wide open. That's going to bring up third and one. They are going to go hurry up as well. Got to be cognizant. They got four wide receivers on the field. Thought that was going to be a run. It's a play fake. There it goes to scrambling. Come on. Converge on him. Going to slide and get it to the 45. Derek does seem to be picking apart our zone coverage, I will say. So I give him credit for that. That might be, I was going to say, surely it's not a run. It's grandpappy. We'll see if they go hurry up. They got one timeout left. They may be playing for the field goal, and if that's the case, that is dumb. 
I don't really know what the logic is here. Um, they have a timeout. Why not? Why not take an end zone shot? I mean, I'm not complaining, but like playing with zero cojones. <laughs> might I add zero, zero cojones. That's good for us though, because it's gonna allow us to go into the locker room up on the scoreboard, which is always nice. But I would say coming out of the locker room, we're gonna need to march down and score a touchdown. Because this Nighthawks team, they're looking pretty good. 2017, and it's pretty evenly matched in terms of passing yards. We're out rushing them for sure. And I think the move is probably going to be defend deep pass because we definitely saw a deep pass or two in this previous game here. Getting a look at the SFL. Nope. Just kidding. JK. I didn't mean to skip that. Sorry, but I did. Um, what should we do? Run inside, I feel like, is probably good. Need some extra block in there. And yeah, definitely going to go defend the deep pass as Daragosa has a perfect quarterback rating when throwing the ball deep. Hopefully we can engineer a nice drive coming out of the locker room. This one is fun and exciting so far. And we really need this because we're, again, we're trying to get back to that illustrious number one seed. Go a little RPO game to start. Zay Jones, though, eh, he's getting pressed. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. This might come back to bite me, I know. But uh, I'm going to do it anyways. We'll put Logan Thomas on a drag. Let me see that safety cheat up. I'm going for it. Oh, baby. Nice defense there by Jeff Okuda. I just can't help it when I see those presses. You know, we've seen uh, so often that they work. Especially if you watch my other series, Sentinels franchise with uh, Scary Terry as our receiver. They work all the freaking time. That time it was good defense and not to be. So second and 10, we're going to go. Oh, I had my tight end, but I couldn't get it off in time. James Houston gets the sack. Not the way that we wanted to start this drive at all. Yeah, that is highly, highly unfortunate. And we are backed up all the way to the 17. So hoping MVS or somebody can get open, which he might. Oh, my God. How did he catch that? I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, MVS is a guy. He is a dude in every sense of the word. Look at that aggressive catch. Corner safety draped all over him. Somehow hangs on. Braces for contact. Brian Branch was right there. So was Jeff Okuda. First down for the T-Birds. All right, we're going to try inside zone out of the gun. I did make that our focus coming out of the locker room and some nice holes for Kareem. Graham Glasgow gets hurt. That's not good because we already lost Trent Williams. Our offensive line starting to dwindle down a little bit, which uh, you never want to see that at all. All right, come on, guys. This is imperative that we score here. Let's give him a little play fake. Need some time and protection. That's picked. Could have been. I definitely had tunnel vision on MVS on that one. I'm not going to lie to you at all. That was my uh, one and only <laughs> real read, I would say. And that is going to bring up third and eight. Is anybody getting pressed? They most certainly are not. Really, really wish they were. Let's have MVS on a drag. Maybe Oxmall or somebody gets open, although I'm not liking it. So Marquez, he's our MVP so far in this game. Hands down, no doubt about it. He's over 100 yards now, and that is great. Jeff Okuda makes the tackle, but the T-Birds drive is still alive. Coach is saying screen to Kareem, and I kind of like that because this pass rush is hot and heavy right now. Best way to quell a hungry pass rush, hit him with a couple successful screens, and it's right there. That's what I'm talking about, man. I can't even get the, the pass off. That's rookie Nick Herbig. And with that being said, we got to kick the field goal with Justin Tucker. I mean, it's the only, only thing that really makes sense to do. Definitely can't go for it in this situation. Not going to punt it. So we're going to end up going up by six. Don't have that warm, fuzzy feeling. Going to need to see uh, Miles Garrett and the boys get some more sacks on Daragosa. If we can do that, I will feel confident. But I give credit to this pass rush by the Nighthawks, or, or maybe it's the lack of our healthy offensive linemen. Whatever the case may be, they're making it tough for Jordan Love and myself. And uh, we'll see what this uh, first drive for the Nighthawks coming out of halftime has to offer. Go a little pressure here. We'll see if he actually gives the ball to Fournette. It's going to be a rare Leonard Fournette. A wild Leonard Fournette appeared. It's only his third rush of the game. And aside from that, it's been all passes from 
Daragosa and the boys, and that time Fournette only able to pick up two. And coming out of shotgun here, one would think this will definitely be a pass. So let's have uh, Leonard Floyd kind of, no, it's good. Yeah, it is going to be a pass. Play fake at that. It's Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen and Jamar Chase are eating in this one for sure. And Derek Derek goes to keeping this drive moving for the Nighthawks. All right, guys, where's my uh, subscriber D tackles at? I need you guys to uh, start making some noise, please. Somebody get the ball out of Adam Thielen's hands. I mean, I understand he's a he's a route technician. I'm not taking anything away from Thielen and the career he's had. But I mean, con flab it, man. I'm sick of calling his name. I really am. And we'll see what uh, Derek Gosta does here. Jamar Chase. We're playing off of him. Oh, come on. Garrett, get him. No, we were so close. And Jamar Chase almost owned us. Miles Garrett almost got his third sack of the afternoon. Somehow, Daragosa got that ball away. No idea how he did it, but he did it. And uh, we're going to also press here as well. Fournette's in the backfield. But got to watch these receivers over here. It's Chase sliding catch. But still four yards short of the sticks. Gotta, gotta, gotta get these Nighthawks off of the field. Gotta watch Jamar Chase. It's gonna know. Just be Colby Parkinson. And he's actually short. Nice tackle there by Marcus Peters. We'll see if they decide to go for it. They're actually gonna kick the field goal. Unless it's a fake, right? But I will say this, uh, the coach of the Nighthawks here, it's the, the New England coach that's not Bill Belichick. He, he, his, he's got some small cojones, all right? pause but i'm just saying he could have had an end zone shot there to end halftime he chose to let the clock down go for a field goal it's fourth and inches you've been moving the ball pretty much at will and you decide to go for the field goal i don't understand the logic again not arguing with it but i would love to go up by 10 here so come on mvs that guy 1000 yard season Jordan Love, no picks in this game. Knock on wood. Let's get it done. I definitely like this coverage. It's going to be inside the zone. Kareem with a couple good blocks. Yeah, I will take that. Kareem actually going to pick up the first down. Go a little TE attack here. Probably try to roll out to the left, which we are. Jordan Love getting hawked down, and I'm just going to run. Yeah, you see. Wow, that was dangerous. You saw, you saw a stop there for a second. I was trying to find Logan Thomas. The defender almost caught up to me. But Jordan Love was able to uh, get back into his running running mode there and pick up a nice first down on the ground. Second time that Love has picked up a first down with his legs. So got to keep that in mind. That may be something that we can potentially utilize, which you see I'm trying again. All right. Maybe got too hung up on that. Nick Herbig, big couple big plays. Tried to throw that one away, but just didn't have the time to do it. That's going to bring up third and ten. And uh, I'm just not liking this, guys. I'm, I'm probably going to be looking for Oxmall, but we got to have some time here because it's play fake city. That's Jordan Love, no picks in this game. Knock on wood. The pick. Oh, boy. Boy, boy, boy. That's going to be Brian Branch. That's all me. I had... Logan Thomas, but I should have hit him much sooner. And we just, uh, yeah, nothing I can say about that. That's not the game. That's not Madden. That's all me, for sure. So our defense needs to just bail us out here. Come on. Get to Daragosa. Thank you. It's Bobby Wagner. Okay, defense bailing us out there for sure. Uh, and we need that because I don't know what's going on. And, I, again, I, I cannot even blame anything with the defense on that one. That was all me. And we're sending heat again. We are sending heat again. Hopefully we can get to Daragosa. We're not going to. It's Jonu Smith. But that's going to bring up a key third and 11. See if we can force him to a punt. Come on, guys. We really need this. We really need this. Please, please, let's get him off of the field. Where's Daragosa going to go? No, it's Jonu Smith. Oh, man. I can't believe I threw that pick. That was the most brain-dead interception and we're still up by three, but the Nighthawks are really are probably going to score a touchdown on this one. Unless we can get a pick. Haven't had too many picks as of late. Where is Marcus Peters and Patrick Peterson and DJ Reed and the brothers? I need them. I need them right now more than ever. Derek Gosa, it's going to be a Leonard Fournette run. 
Haven't seen too many of those. And now Brandon Graham gets injured. These Thunderbirds just cannot stay healthy. Hit him with a little dime pack, dime coverage here, man coverage, and gonna be watching the running back Black Shear. Nope, it's just the ageless wonder himself, Adam Thielen. And it looks like we are primed for an exciting fourth quarter. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sick of exciting fourth quarters. I'm gonna be honest with you. I want some blowouts, and I need my subscriber D tackles. Thank you. Not a subscriber D tackle. But I will certainly take it from Leonard Floyd. It's a big sack on Daragosa to make it second and goal from the 19. All right, that was key. Key indeed. Antoine Winfield, I'm used to run up on him. Gonna see what uh, good old Colby <laughs> Parkinson does. Oh, come on. Somebody gets a Fournette. Do not let Fournette score. He, he got about half of that back, though, so give him credit for that. I'm gonna go pressure because that is what has worked the best so far today. And uh, hopefully it can work good again here, too. Got usered up with Boyer here. Oh, my God. The precision pinpoint accuracy by Daragosa to hit Isaiah Hodgins in the end zone. That was not an easy pass at all. That was not an easy pass at all. That was good blanket coverage. And for the first time today, because of my incoherent interception, Ihawk's going to take the lead. They also got full momentum now. Draw play to Tubby. It wasn't working earlier, but we did make the run inside our focus, so maybe we'll get some different results now. That's better. I will take it. Quite possibly the biggest third down coming up now. Third and three. This may even be four down territory. Again, coach is saying screen to Kareem. Again, I'm going to call it. Got to watch out because they might start... Yeah, and they can see my primary receiver. I don't know how much the CPU factors into that, but we're going to go to it anyways. Kareem with room to go. Still going. I would say Kareem or MVS has definitely been our MVP today. That was a good one because uh keeps this much-needed drive alive. I'll tell you what here. I'm not going to go away from McDouble. We uh, still got tons of time here, so clock is not a factor whatsoever. Also not a factor is the offensive line as they appear to not have any interest in the run block game today. Go single back here, uh, play action rollout. Maybe Zay Jones can get open. That would be fan-freaking-tastic. Come on, Zay. There we go. Haven't called his name too much today as well. He's having a great season. Really, I mean, our top three, Olave, Zay Jones, and of course, MVS. MVS may <laughs> be in the MVP possibly, but Zay Jones has had some great games as well. And this is a good uh, defense that I'm seeing here for a run from Tubby. But again, it all starts with the blockers. And I don't know what else to do. I mean, three yards, I can live with it. But still, we're just not seeing it from the boys today. RPO again out of the gun. And should I expect anything different, guys? Is that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results? I think it is, and that puts us in a very precarious situation indeed. I don't like any of these plays either, might I add, that the that the uh, coach is calling. Not a fan of them. Maybe Oxmall could be the main read here. I think I'm going to have Zay Jones on a drag as well. But uh, I'm thinking Oxmall. Oh, my God, he was... Ugh. Uh, he had it. That would have been six. But this offensive line, and I'm going to kick the field goal because we have all of our timeouts. And I'm sure the Nighthawks will be in run mode on this next drive. But if we go on to lose this game, which that'll be three in a row, by the way, which is absolutely crazy. I would say the big storyline is just the lack of offensive line play. I know we lost a couple good ones. But I feel like even before that, you know, before Trent Williams exited the game, before Graham Glasgow exited the game, I just feel like it was it wasn't there at all. So maybe blitz counters the new move. At any rate, we got more important things to worry about. Got to force a punt from the Nighthawks now. Playbook is pretty much wide open here too. I could see them going run or pass, either or. It is going to be a run and okay, enter enter Leonard Fournette. We haven't seen this guy do anything all game. And watch, I bet you now he's going to start ripping up, ripping off big play after big play. And got to also think about using these timeouts at some point too. We're approaching the two-minute warning here. 
Um, they're letting all the clock tick down as well, which uh, I, I definitely agree with. Not going to call a timeout yet. See if uh, they continue to go to Fournette. Two-minute warning coming up here and pretty much just selling out to stop the run. We got uh, Antoine Winfield. Nice tackle there. Nice tackle. We're going to go ahead and call a timeout. And this is third and four. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Nighthawks do go through the air on this one. So, oh boy, what do we do here, guys? We're going to come out man. We're going to audible into pressure because I feel like sometimes that works in Madden. Don't ask me why, but it just does. And got to get him off the field. It's a pitch play. It's a pitch play, and we're there to stop Fortinet. Definitely going to call a timeout now. Why a pitch? Of all the things you could call, that was almost like a little college some uh, NCAA football 25 stuff there. If they fake this punt and get it, I am I'm gonna end the recording now. Actually, I'm not. They're gonna punt it, right? Surely, of course they're gonna punt it. Yes, they will. It's not a very good one. It doesn't appear. It's not. And all we gotta do, guys, is get down into field goal range. We got a minute 48 seconds to do it and one timeout. Let's see if we can get the job done. Again, though, I think it all starts with protection. I'm gonna try to hit Pravda Scantling. On this crossing route here but we need the protection come on mvs it was great defense there by brian branch brian branch is also locked in on this one too i will say he's he's uh he's playing good and i'll probably i can't even audible my guys now they're they're confused i want to put oxmall on a streak there we go thank you see if we can hit valda scantling on this corner route my god dude Cannot get any time at all. Yeah, this is wild, man. This is wild. Um, gotta pick this up. Obviously, four down territory, no doubt about it. Uh, let's just go ahead and give it to McDouble, who gets very close. And on fourth and one here, we don't need to call our timeout yet. And I think what has been working the most is inside run to Kareem Hunt. That's where we've seen the most success today. And, uh, oh, God, dude, I so badly. Nope, we're going to go to Kareem. We're going to go to Kareem. Kareem going to get it easily. Thank you. And that's going to get us very close to Justin Tucker field goal range. Not there yet, though. So got to kind of move a little quickly here. Going to be inside zone to Kareem again until they give me a reason not to. We know Justin Tucker's got the leg. We know Justin Tucker's got the leg. And, I mean, I'm going to go same exact same exact play, right? We're pretty much in J-Tuck field goal range now. So let's just get a little closer, make it a little easier for him. And this is where I think we call our timeout. They're going to ice me, which is always something that I hate. But I'm not going to risk anything else crazy happening. Going to go ahead and call a timeout here right now. See if we can kick this walk-off game-winning field goal. Here is the ice. Got to make sure I drill this, so I'm going to be quiet now. That should be good because of the slowdown kick meter. See ya! Thunderbirds eke out a win. My Hawks did make it very interesting. That was a fun game. Fun, stressful. And shout out to Derek Daragosa and his Nighthawks. They did not make it easy. We were able to finally, finally get a decent little drive there at the end. Maybe I could have managed it a little bit better. But I was confident kicking it with from the 50 with Justin Tucker. I knew he had that slowdown kick meter feature. And uh, But I'll tell you what. Getting close to the playoffs here. We're going to be in it for sure. But I got to stop throwing picks. Derek Daragosa, 295. Three touchdowns, no picks. And nearly a perfect quarterback rating. Jordan Love, not a perfect quarterback rating. Still decent, 286, one touchdown and a pick. And then the running game, we could never really get it going. Kareem Hunt did. Okay, I should say. Tubby could not get it going. Kareem Hunt did. Average nine yards per carry. Jordan Love, a couple of big scrambles. Actually identical from Jordan Love and Daragosa. Interesting there. And then receivers, it was the battle of MVS and Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase outshined us, but... MVS and his guys did get the W, so that's all that matters. Adam Thielen played good. Johnu Smith, Logan Thomas had a good game as well. And then TFLs, Miles Garrett, Anthony Walker both had two. Two big sacks from Miles Garrett. Also Leonard Floyd, Yaya Diaby, Bobby Wagner, Jay Mongstro had a half a sack. Okay, I see. And then also wanted to check out, forgot, uh, Mike Oxmall, one, cat, one uh, reception. 
for nine yards. And defensive tackle Silas Vaden. Only two tackles, but that's okay. Again, we ended up getting the W. That's all that matters. And now we can go ahead and check out the subscriber stats here in week 16. Lumberjacks beat the Golden Eagles 17 to 2. There's a score for you. And we'll check out the stats of subscriber quarterback Michael Yakin, 201 yards and a touchdown. So uh, a very workmanlike performance, I would say. And subscriber tight end James Briner had a big impact in this one with five catches for 43 yards. Oakland Wizards actually dropped to the St. Louis Bulls, and that's a big one for the Wizards because they're jockeying for playoff position. They're, they're playing really good. And uh, check out the rushing stats of someone who's been on a tear, which is Ayam Al Musa. Kind of cooled off in this one. Only 16 carries for 49 yards. Prior to this game, he was lighting it up for sure. And then taking a look at our subscriber, a linebacker here, Michael Briner. Only three tackles and no game-wrecking plays. Wizards probably could have used some in this one, unfortunately. Hashtag freaking Houston Oilers. Ever since we added those three subscribers, they are on, I think, a three-game winning streak. And they're in the playoffs, too. So shout out to Oilers Nation out there. We got QB Lucas Thomas, 235 through the air, two touchdowns and two picks. Getting a look at running back Austin Gutierrez here. 18 carries for 85, averaging a solid 4.7 yards per carry. And then, of course, our subscriber receiver here. Where is he at? Kyrie Brooks. Three receptions for 31 yards, average 10.3. But most important thing, Oilers are making some noise out there. Virginia Beach Blues also making some noise as they continue their climb over on the NFC side here. So we got to take a look at our receiving stats first for Easy Fuentes back in the fray here. Four receptions for 38 yards and a touchdown, which I believe was uh, Josh Allen's lone touchdown pass. It was. So shout out to Easy for getting a good one there. And Johnny Waters of the Orbits also got a touchdown on the ground. Nine attempts for 48 yards, averaged a very solid. 5.3 yards on the ground and of course that big touchdown and then looking at the stats of our corner flash parker free safety that is six tackles and no big again game wrecking plays and the orbits probably could have used some of those too sacramento sentinels drop to the mounties and we got a subscriber qb rocky di bernardo and i'll tell you about rocky here man he has been lighting it up through the air his team doesn't necessarily have the best record but 324 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. You really can't argue with that at all. And it looks like, uh, wow, Jamison Crowder was his number one target. Seven catches for a buck 42. Wasn't enough to propel the Sentinels to a win, though. Chicago Elks dropped to the Dragons as well. We got a lone subscriber on the Elks here, which would be a running back, Darian Wolcott. He played pretty good. 12 attempts for 53 yards and a touchdown. Uh, looks like Trevor Lawrence probably could have did a little bit more. And unfortunately, the Elks do take the L on this one. Melbourne Dreadnoughts, who we see next week to cap off this SFL season. Bryce Young is their quarterback and subscriber. Alexander Klobleck is their receiver. He had a pretty good game. Four for 56. No touchdowns. Jalen Waddle was the uh, recipient of that. And also Harrison Bryant, too. But still a good game from Alexander and... The Melbourne Dreadnoughts did get the win. Very curious to see them in the final week, week 18 of the SFL. OKC Antlers did beat the Tigers. So we got uh, about five subscribers to go around here. We'll look at the Tigers first. And they got two uh, receivers here. St. James with one catch for eight yards. Doesn't look like my man Nick Stoyer. Hopefully he's not hurt. That would suck. I can't go. <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to go back and keep adding these injured players. So unfortunate for the tigers and then we get a look at uh subscriber corner king love he had three tackles and dior love had two tackles but a big pass deflection and then on the antlers we have cornerback c ben who had five tackles no big game changing plays but the okc antlers did get the win in this one looks like the dublin shamrocks finally starting to cool off not sure if they're still in the playoffs we'll check the uh standings and everything next week QB Jesse Buzo Jr., only 184 yards through the ground and one touchdown as well. 
But how about receiver Uku Tree Rhett? Five receptions, 74 yards, and a touchdown. Even though his team didn't get the victory, still nice to see some good solid numbers like that. And then we also got uh, corner Ty Royal Smoochie Wallace. Six tackles, could have used the big pick probably or a forced fumble to help propel the Dublin Shamrocks to a victory. But nice to see uh, subscribers getting some pretty good stats on the board. Armadillo's lost to the Aviators, and that's a big one because we need the Aviators to lose if we want to reclaim our number one seed here. Geno Smith played, okay. And we got a couple subscriber receivers here. We got Jaden Taylor, the wide receiver. He had three catches for 40 yards. And then Bjorn Jeffrey, tight end. He had three for 30 yards. Looks like AJ Brown had the lone touchdown pass from Geno Smith. And getting a look at the stats of Arturo Esquivel. He had six tackles and a big TFL. So that was definitely good to see from him. Probably needed a little bit more. Uh, because the Armadillos unfortunately lost in this one. Canton Condor has also cooled down. They were on a bit of a win streak. They lose to the Salt Lake City Bisons. Quarterback Mason Buchanan, though, he's having a great, great SFL debut. 338 through the air, two touchdowns. Those two picks, though, might have proved to be pretty costly. Uh, subscriber running back Nico Petey. Not a lot of yards per carry, only 2.2, but did find the end zone two times. So you can't really argue with that too much. Uh, receiver, we got Braden Keys here for the Condors. Five receptions for 53 yards, no touchdowns. But his team still did get the victory, so that is good to see. And we got a couple safeties here. Eli Sokowitz, I see a pass deflection. That's good. Also three tackles. And then Mike Collins, three tackles as well. Could have used some picks, guys. We need you to, uh, to get some picks to help these Condors get some more wins today. And capping off Week 17 stats with the Paris Black Knights, who did get the win over the Omaha Pioneers. Quarterback Jaden Hayes, he hasn't had a lot of huge yardage type games like i've been seeing 188 now that could very well be the playbook i have no idea what playbook they're running um and then his brother caleb hayes only one catch for 28 yards but uh shout out to all the subscribers those are your stats for week 17 and we only got one more week here in the sfl until the playoffs so i will go through the standings next week maybe even the stats i don't know want to keep the episodes I will go through the stats at some point, but now they're going to kind of be skewed because of the injuries and having to recreate people. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But that is going to do it for me tonight. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.